Hi, I'm Nora for eNotes.com. Welcome to our Literary Word of the Week. This week's word is consequence. Consequence has several shades of meaning. One of its rare shades is to indicate someone who can create a significant effect or has social importance. Here's how Jane Austen uses the word consequence in her novel Pride and Prejudice. She is tolerable, but not handsome enough to tempt me. I'm in no humor at present to give consequence to young ladies who are slighted by other men. Your challenge is to use the word in your own video and post it as a response. Good luck! Hi, I'm Nora for eNotes.com. Welcome to our Literary Word of the Week. This week's word is benevolence. Benevolence refers to a person's ability to do good deeds or acts of kindness. Here's how Harper Lee uses benevolence in her novel To Kill a Mockingbird. Miss Mottie's benevolence extended to Jem and Dill whenever they paused in their pursuits. We reap the benefits of a talent Miss Mottie had hitherto kept hidden from us. She made the best cakes in the neighborhood. Your challenge is to use the word in your own video and post it as a response. Good luck! Hi, I'm Nora for eNotes.com. Welcome to our Literary Word of the Week. This week's word is sagacity. Sagacity refers to the quality of being highly observant or perceptive. Here's how Charles Dickens uses sagacity in his novel, A Tale of Two Cities. If your sagacity, knowledge, and experience could put me on the right track, I might be able to do so much. Unenlightened and undirected, I can do so little. Your challenge is to use the word in your own video and post it as a response. Hi, I'm Nora for eNotes.com. Welcome to our Literary Word of the Week. This week's word is stalwart. Stalwart indicates something that is marked by great strength of body, spirit, or mind. Here's how Bram Stoker uses stalwart in his novel, Dracula. He looked desperately sad and broken. Even his stalwart manhood seemed to have shrunk somewhat under the strain of his much-tried emotions. Your challenge is to use the word in your own video and post it as a response. Hi, I'm Nora for eNotes.com. Welcome to our Literary Word of the Week. This week's word is emigrant. An emigrant is someone who leaves his or her country to live somewhere else. Here's how Maxine Hong Kingston uses emigrant in her book, The Woman Warrior. Those of us in the first American generations have had to figure out how the invisible world the emigrants built around our childhoods fit in solid America. Your challenge is to use the word in your own video and post it as a response. Hi, I'm Nora for eNotes.com. Welcome to our Literary Word of the Week. This week's word is predilection. Predilection refers to having an established preference for something. Here's how Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley uses predilection in her novel, Frankenstein. Natural philosophy is the genius that has regulated my fate. I desire, therefore, in this narration, to relate those facts which led to my predilection for that science. Your challenge is to use the word in your own video and post it as a response. Hi, I'm Nora for eNotes.com. Welcome to our Literary Word of the Week. This week's word is proximity. Proximity refers to the quality or state of being close by. Here's how F. Scott Fitzgerald uses proximity in his novel, The Great Gatsby. My own house was an eyesore, but it was a small eyesore and it had been overlooked. So I had a view of the water, a partial view of my neighbor's lawn, and the consoling proximity of millionaires, all for $80 a month. Your challenge is to use the word in your own video and post it as a response. Good luck. Hi, I'm Nora for eNotes.com. Welcome to our Literary Word of the Week. This week's word is bewilderment. Bewilderment refers to the state of being confused or perplexed. Here's how Graham Greene uses bewilderment in his novel, The Quiet American. I put out my hand to Mr. Chow, who allowed it to rest between his palms with a look of bewilderment, then gazed around the crowded room as though he were trying to fit me in. Your challenge is to use the word in your own video and post it as a response. Hi, I'm Nora for eNotes.com. Welcome to our Literary Word of the Week. This week's word is interminable. Interminable means having or seeming to have no end. Here's how Joseph Conrad uses interminable in his novel, Heart of Darkness. The sea reach of the Thames stretched before us like the beginning of an interminable waterway. 
Your challenge is to use a word in your own video and post it as a response. Hi, I'm Nora for eNotes.com. Welcome to our Literary Word of the Week. This week's word is disparity. Disparity refers to the quality of being markedly distinct or different. Here's how Emily Bronte uses disparity in her novel, Wuthering Heights. I might have seen that there was too great a disparity between the ages of the parties to make it likely that they were man and wife. Your challenge is to use the word in your own video and post it as a response. Good luck. Hi, I'm Nora for eNotes.com. Welcome to our Literary Word of the Week. This week's Hi, I'm Nora for eNotes.com. Welcome to our Literary Word of the Week. This week's word is disparity. Disparity refers to the quality of being markedly distinct or different. Here's how Emily Bronte uses disparity in her novel, Wuthering Heights. I might have seen that there was too great a disparity between the ages of the parties to make it likely that they were man and wife. Your challenge is to use the word in your own video and post it as a response. Good luck. The word is prosaic. Prosaic refers to something that is dull and uninteresting. Here's how Thomas Hardy uses prosaic in his novel, Tess of the Dubervilles. Directly the assuring and prosaic light of the world's active hours had grown strong. She crept from under her hillock of leaves and looked around boldly. Your challenge is to use a word in your own video and post it as a response. Hi, I'm Nora for eNotes.com. Welcome to our Literary Word of the Week. This week's word is eccentricity. Eccentricity refers to something that is different from the conventional and ordinary. Here's how John Irving uses eccentricity in his novel, The World According to Garp. Jenny's book was more of a shock to Helen when she first read it than it was to Garp, who, after all, had lived with his mother and was unsurprised by her eccentricity. It had become commonplace to him. Your challenge is to use the word in your own video and post it as a response. Hi, I'm Nora for eNotes.com. Welcome to our Literary Word of the Week. This week's word is indolent. Indolent has several shades of meaning. One common use is to refer to someone who is habitually lazy or adverse to activity. Here's how George Eliot uses indolent in her novel Felix Holt, The Radical. She was too indolent mentally, too little interested to acquaint herself with any secrets of the aisle. Your challenge is to use the word in your own video and post it as a response. Hi, I'm Nora for eNotes.com. Welcome to our Literary Word of the Week. This week's word is improvident. Improvident refers to someone or something not providing or preparing for the future. Here's how Chinua Achibe uses improvident in his novel, Things Fall Apart. In his day, he was lazy and improvident and was quite incapable of thinking about tomorrow. Your challenge is to use the word in your own video and post it as a response. Good luck.